hey, you want to get promoted, this is how you do the job. So now you got another group of people and another group, and it just keeps going. It's like a it's like a bicycle with one wheel, and it's not a unicycle. You know what I mean? <laughs> like right. so now, once something happens, a lot of people will say, "Well, why don't the good cops tell on the bad cops?" Okay, but I'm reporting a bad cop to another bad cop. So how do you think that's mm-hmm. gonna work out? And let me just go over here and try to do my job the best I can. Let me try to establish some type of rapport like Officer Tommy Norman, the Little Rock, Arkansas Police Department, who's established, I mean, community policing at his father. You know, he, he's actually, he's not just in the car. He's in the neighborhood. Everybody knows him. He's doing stuff for people in the community, probably on his own dime. But to do that and to show that not all um, officers look like those who were out there trying to beat Rodney King into another dimension some 25 years ago. You know, they're not like those officers now that will say, oh, I was in fear for my life. When you tell a man to go get his ID and he reaches in the car and then you shoot him. Well, that officer just got sent into some prison time. I don't know if you caught that. If I find the article, I'll post it on the page. But he's like, I've waited all three years to tell you I'm sorry. Well, sorry, you lucky you didn't kill him, you know. And, and look at what happened to Fernando Castile, man, mind his own business. They ended up losing his life that day. And the bad cops are in charge of all the cops. In some cases, not in all. Yeah. But it makes it difficult when you're trying to do your job based on the oath you took. And it's like, I don't have time to jump into this fight. I just hope. He'll get what's coming to him one day. Because, you know, like, the, the, it, it's a tough spot to be in. It's a tough spot to be in when you're faced with that racism and, and discrimination and you want to figure out, like, what's my next move? Do I take it all the way to the extreme and then I'm in trouble? Or do I fight with my mind and an ink pen? But now you got to figure out how to, uh, you know, how to do it. Now, Sonny Lanham died, too, at 76. I think he was in Predator and a couple of other movies. They usually say celebrity does die in threes. So I, I just saw it on TV. It flashed up on the screen. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to jump off of what I was talking about, but, you know, they usually say those celebrity, uh, celebrity homegoings come in threes. That would make the third person. So um, hopefully we don't yeah. see that for a while. Yeah, hopefully not. Like I said, losing those, losing those kind of legendary folks is going to be difficult out of the entertainment world. But coming back mm-hmm. to what we talked about, even the tactics have to be, uh, can be variant. Do I necessarily agree with everything that an anarchist does? Not, nope. not often, but I do understand that they do have um, that right to that tactic, and a lot of times we have to have variant tactics in order to win what changes we do get won. People talk about the civil rights era, and they talk about the difference between uh, Malcolm and uh, Martin Luther King, Andrew Young, and the Black Panthers, or things of that nature. But you know, it probably took the both of all of those tactics from both sides in order for those changes to be made. Because sometimes, you know, you got to have those folks doing it the peaceful way. You got to have those folks to be a little bit more on the radical side in order for it to be that wake up call that we oftentimes need in order for change to happen. Yep, and that's where that balance comes in. That's exactly where it comes in. And it's important that those, uh, you know, everybody gets involved in something, in some type of something, you know, and whether it be a church, whether it be a civic organization, whether it be a civil rights organization, fraternal organization, Masonic organization, something, because at some point we're all going to have to come together to to take this thing out they call hate, you know what I mean? And if we don't, and you continue to stand on the sideline and say, well, it hasn't happened to me, well, it happened to you, yes. But one day you might just walk into it. Now, what are you going to do, and who are you going to call on when it does? You know, so we have to, to start getting prepared, not necessarily for a race war, but for a hate war. And if you get um, enough people which I believe we as a collective can do 
to get rid of the few because it's not like they're the majority. They just, you know, they still exist. They took their hoods off. So now you know exactly what you're looking at. You know, so in their stupidity, now it's time to play chess. We got to be two, three moves ahead. And they're not going to be thinking about that because they're reactive. You know, oh, you found out. Oh, we found out they're going to take the statue down. Let's go march on this campus. Well, at UVA, they can get that off because the way things are over there in Charlottesville, they're able to do that. But let's see, would, would they do the same thing in a Chicago and a, a Los Angeles, like the other side of Los Angeles where we live? You, you know what I mean? Would you do it down in, in parts of, of Virginia or, you know, North Carolina or even some spots in South Carolina? Are you really going to go there? Are you? No. You know, and I, I'm quite sure they wouldn't go to, like, the pork and beans section in Miami, no. in the hood, no. and walk through there with those torches. It wouldn't be a good day for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it, when we look at it, it's something that we do have to resist. It's just we have to figure out which, are you the protester or are you the negotiator? Whichever way you fall, there's no right or wrong to it. We try to make it right and wrong based on our beliefs, which sometimes that has to be ironed out. But you're going to need a little bit of everything and attack it from all sides. Because once you attack it from all sides, it's either going to try to fight back or it's going to fold once it realizes that's, that it's outnumbered. So that's something that we just have to do. Yeah, that's very true. Before we wind down, I think we've got about another nine minutes to go. But I was just wondering, because we've been avoiding that topic for a while, but I was actually talking to a friend of mine, I think it was about a week ago, and they were saying that they were actually contemplating Boycotting the sport, meaning not watching it, but also possibly even boycotting fantasy because of what's going on with uh, Colin uh, Kaepernick. And I was wondering what your thoughts on that were, whether uh, you're seeing anybody up in your neighborhood that's either boycotting their fantasy league or thinking about boycotting just football in general until Colin finds a home, or what do you think that that's just a lot of lip service to folks are giving? I honestly don't care. I'm going to watch football regardless. I've been in between playing and watching in some form of fashion for 39 years. There have been a lot of players that came before Colin Kaepernick. There will be a lot of players that come after him. I'm not, me personally, if you don't want to boycott, then don't. I'm not. If you want to boycott, then boycott. But each one lead the other alone. Like, I don't feel like hearing you talk to me and try to shame me into boycotting something. That's the reason I'm not boycotting now. I don't have to fold to your pressure and vice versa. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm the only fool paying my bills when they come due. You know what I mean? As far as those bills in my name, nobody else is taking care of that for me. I got to pay that myself. And in the age of free will, in the age of free will, we all have the opportunity to do what we want to do for us. There are some people who will never watch a football game again, and that's okay. And there are some people who will boycott and go further and boycott the sponsors because, you know what, without a Nielsen box, I don't think they give a damn about what you're watching on TV anyway. So, you know, if if you're just not watching on TV, they're like, no big deal. We take a sample of about 10,000 people to figure out what 10 million people are watching and, and we're going off guesstimates and assumptions. So that's really, to me, like, you know, what are you going to do? You you pick a side and you go with it. Some people are going to halfway, they're going to say, I'm doing it, and then nobody knows they're doing it in the comfort of their home, but that's okay too. You know, but when asked directly, am I boycotting football? No, I'm not. Um, yeah, I'm probably, you know, we'll be watching it as well, it, so I know the feeling, but I did have some friends that said they were contemplating boycotting both regular football as well as not participating in the fantasy league. Now, whether that's actually going to happen or not, they may be talked out of it, to, out of it they may actually do it, but uh, right now they're saying that they're not going to be involved. 
Not, what do you think that's going to be? I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> yeah. What do you think that's going to mention real quickly as we wrap up the show? Is it one of the other events that I went to? And I understand that these events are all over the country, but we had ours this past Sunday, and I caught the tail end of it, and it was just beautiful seeing um, the brothers and the sisters out there both honoring our legacy as well as just getting their dance groove on and also supporting some various groups that are doing a lot of positives in our community. But I don't know whether y'all have one in New Jersey. I'm pretty sure there's one in Virginia. I know we had ours this past weekend, but that is the whole concept of Black August in the park. You know, Black August is a month to to learn and acknowledge the historic and contemporary struggle of black people and recognize fallen soldiers in the cause of black liberation. And apparently the month of August was picked because of so many things that have happened in the month of August. On August 28, 1963, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom galvanized hundreds of thousands in the streets of the nation's capital. On August 18, 1971, the Provisional Government of the Republic of New Africa, RNA, was raided by the Mississippi Police and FBI agents. And on August 22, 1843, abolitionists, so that will be celebrated on tomorrow, abolitionist Henry Highland Garner, called a mass general slave strike in a protest against human captivity and white supremacy. So you see this struggle has been going on for some time. So this is not anything new. As a matter of fact, one of the last ones, and I might read some other ones of history on an upcoming edition of the show, but one of the last ones I'll read was that on August 30th, 1800. So we're talking, uh, what, this is 2017, 217 years ago, um, in about a week or so, enslaved freedom fighter, Gabriel Prosser, and I heard think we heard his name mentioned earlier today, planned to initiate his statewide slave rebellion in Richmond, Virginia. Unfortunately, he was betrayed by two slaves who wanted to protect their masters. Yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's, we will have to drop some more nuggets on, on a future yeah. show. We got anybody coming yeah. up for next week? We got about two good minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm still working on a couple of folks I'm going to see if I can get Valerie Cooper Who is at Duke And she's involved with the uh, School of Divinity over there So I'm going to see if I can get her We've heard about uh, the folks that pulled down the statue I did reach out to them um, And was hoping to get some of them on this week's show But if not, they might be on next week's show as well So definitely am out in the streets Rounded up some good guests for us And I'm going to continue doing that So there will be somebody probably from the uh, social justice and political world, as well as uh, possibly some entertainers also that I am looking into uh, bringing on to the show. And who knows? We may get another guest that we were not expecting because we had our first, that I am aware of, no second, because uh, no, they were planned because I planned them. But I think that this was our first time of having somebody call into the show that was not scheduled to call in but who was an activist herself. So I want to give a big shout-out. I forgot her name, but I'll go back and listen to the show so I can catch it, as well as all those websites that she dropped. But I want to give a big shout-out to the young lady that called in from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, you know, we've been doing this for a while, and we have now hit a land, uh, uh, what do you call it, a milestone, because we have had our first caller that just was doing that Google search thing, is what she said she was doing. So all that uh-huh. we were going to be talking about something that interested in her, and she decided to call in. So hopefully other folks are doing that as well. Oh, yeah, and, and and just don't forget, Monday night, 7 p.m., here at blogtalkradio.com, backslash Ty Jones, the voice. Or you can call and join in the conversation at 646-668-8393. Tip, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, YouTube, we're everywhere. It's the voice of the people, y'all. I am the six-man Dean Geronimo. That's Mark Lee. I am, that's right. I'm we'll Mark Lee. I've certainly enjoyed the conversation, and we'll see y'all next week when hopefully we'll just continue the rich dialogue that we have on this show. And as uh, I like to say, we're shooting for all 50 states. We're going to get all 50 states, and we're going to try to get every last country that there is in this lovely world of ours. Chuck, we might even try to get a call in from one of those astronauts from over this up there in space. Keep this thing going. Hey, dude, dude, still getting Hold the mic like a yo. I'm like still getting mine.